Drummers Only is the UK's leading drum shop with store locations in Glasgow and Leeds. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let's do this. Hello everybody, Drummers Only Radio episode number 61. And we're here with the wonderful Graham Hopkins. Hello Graham. Hi Chris, how you doing? I'm good man, I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me on. I'm just fixing my headphones here and my glasses and Th- that's getting all right. comfy. That's all right. So if, if you out there in the internet land and in, in audio land are new to Graham's playing, he is very obviously from Ireland and has played with some tremendous um, tremendous acts from over there, including Therapy, uh, Dolores O'Riordan, who was famed for the Cranberries and her solo career, the wonderful Glenn Hansard from The Frames and the award-winning film Once, and... Um, Gemma Hayes, which was, do you know, as a complete surprise to me, if my research and timeline is right, I saw you playing with Gemma in Glasgow. Where was that? At the SECC supporting Counting Crows. Oh, right. Wow. I remember that. 2002. Remember that? Wow. That was, that was a great, it was a fun run. That was with Counting Crows with Gemma. Yeah. It was on, it was supporting her first album, I think. It was, yeah. We did a lot of touring with, Je- with Gemma on that album. Like it was fantastically, uh, you know, nominated for the Mercury. So and it was just, it did so well. And uh, you know, we were friends before when she was recording it and all the band. And then to go out with it, it was great fun. It was great, and she got offered lots of tours, opening up for artists like Count Crows, and that was playing arenas for about a month or two months, like. You know, that's the thing about the UK and Ireland. There's just relentless, like, you know, arenas in every town. Mm. And uh, it was such fun. Yeah, I mean, it must have been, God, pretty daunting for Gemma. I mean, by that point, you were fairly, you were fairly seasoned by that point. You'd, you've been around the world countless times with therapy and stuff by that point, right? Yeah, I had been, yeah. So it must have helped her out, right? Because she, she went from yeah. nothing to just, like, arenas. Yeah, she like she was kind of playing here and there. She was doing well for herself in Ireland, and mm-hmm. uh, playing like acoustic gigs. And then all of a sudden, she uh, recorded that album. It did really well straight away. And then she was taken up by um, um, the managers who really helped her were managed by uh, Radiohead and Supergrass's management, oh, and they wow. really helped her do phenomenally well as well as her music obviously being fantastic you know yeah um so we did tours opening for um suede as well who else uh oh i can't even remember but i do remember like leaving therapy and just joining uh, with Gemma straight away so it was very very different mm. but uh with great friends uh, so it was it was a lot of fun as well as being musically the polar opposite of what i'd done for <laughs> six years prior to that you know yeah absolutely man that that because there's some moments on that first record are super gentle yeah um, and, and then it just goes from being kind of mellow and then it just explodes yeah you know yeah and that was great fun live as well you know yeah we, um so you, you joined therapy when you were what 20 years old after 20 being, yeah so yeah. And they were already relatively well established by that point. Yeah, what they was were in the middle of that, in the middle of their, you know, their ginormous success. You know? Yeah, right. So what what was that like for you to just to go into a band that big, uh, on what was what the second gig of your career? Um, it was phenomenal, really, uh, and kind of even surreal. Even though I, you know, been in another professional band, because. Uh, they were doing so well um, and that gave me some kind of um, I don't know professionalism that I wasn't afraid to just take it on and go mm-hmm. for it mm-hmm. uh, Fife Ewing as we know was you know a great drummer a very signature drummer had mm-hmm. his own kind of uh, thing going with he always had a piccolo snare like a timbale beside mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. so a lot of the songs had this signature kind of uh, beat you know beat going so um obviously some of the songs that i played i had to do that but mm-hmm. i didn't want to kind of um copy him or you know be five few in the second i wanted to do my own thing 
Yeah. And it was amazing that they took me on. Uh, what I did, I had a little 12 inch pork pie snare <laughs> and um, I just did my own thing. And it was phenomenal at 20 years of age that I did it. And I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I was going to say, that seems seems like it's something that would be relatively rare for a, a player so young to be given that kind of freedom. Yes, and that's the great thing about those guys. They were so free mm. in all kinds of ways. Um, they never stuck to one thing, and they still, they're still they still together, and they're still doing so great, so well. And every single album that the bands release is the polar opposite to the album before. Right. You know, they never stick to the one thing and that was the great thing about the album Trouble Gun that mm. was their big you know really big success um, a successful album with songs like Trouble Gun or songs like um, uh, I can't even think now um, songs name me some successful um uh, T. Grinder was on the, the album before that. Trouble gun, go. so like Knives, Die Laughing, Screamager, Nowhere. There you go, you've said them all. <laughs> I'm always like that with names of songs. Once you sing the first bar, I'll play it. But, um, um, and then with the album after that, they just went completely different. Right. You know, and then the album after that, the next few albums I played with, every single album was completely different. It was very admirable. And refreshing as well, because I guess at that time, it was we were still sort of in the in the middle of record labels being the bosses, and and a lot of the the, the bands that you found just tried to redo the same thing because that's kind of what the public wanted. Yeah. So that must have been really cool as as one of your first major experiences to experience a band that were like, nah, this we're just gonna do what we want. Yeah, it was tr- very true because a lot, you know, the the kind of punk thing was so successful at that at that time you know with bands like uh green day and uh there was another one with the guy with the kind of um kind of uh, the glasses and the kind of uh, bleached kind of hair the uh, offspring for, uh, very that's the very band and so that was ian around the same time as trouble gum they could have easily continued that similar kind of vibe that they were on but they didn't yeah, mm. uh, that was great. Uh, were you were you a, like a, were you a member of the band or were you a side man? That was a great thing about it. Everybody was taken on board, and Martin mm-hmm. McCarrick played cello as well and guitar. He was taken on board the same time as I was. That's right. Martin yeah. had toured uh, the uh, all throughout Trouble Gun playing cello and guitar. Yeah, and absolutely f- amazing musician, you know. Yeah, did it make you nervous to t- to take it on? Uh, at the very start, I was kind of uh, not as much nervous, slightly anxious, mm-hmm. because I had to kind of uh, take the seat of somebody who was seen as, you know, such a, an influence on so many drummers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just did my own thing. <laughs> just die yeah. on die on that hill, man. That's, I guess, the only way to do it, right? Uh, I genuinely did. And because I was so young and so eager, eager I just went, bring it on. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, you, you've played with some some pretty marquee artists. You know, Dolores is a, is a or was a huge name. I mean, that that band were enormous for the longest time. You know, so and and Glenn Hansard's like he's no slouch either. You know, these 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 people are super creative. Um, what what have, what kind of things did they teach you? These people. Um, I think. What's taught me has been, um, I love like my upkeep. I I talk about this r- relentlessly when doing like chatting, to, like yourself, and when I'm doing interviews, and I'd say people are sick of me saying it, but it's kind of like my upbringing of going to gigs. I'm going to take my glasses off. Sorry okay. with these headphones. Um, if I, if I'm looking out over here, because <laughs> I won't know where I'm looking. But um, it's uh, my upbringing and going to gigs with my father and um, listening to him play all sorts of songs, you know, mm-hmm. very eclectic musical upbringing. And I think that's why uh, I might have approached my musical drumming career uh, so far. It's a long way from being over. 
Um, uh, you know, as as so well as I have, mm-hmm. if that sounds okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is a good way to approach it, rather than sticking to one music. You mm-hmm. know, I, and I think it's a great way of playing music to be stuck in one band. To be stuck in one kind of music is overly boring. I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm, mm-hmm. And um, I like to jump from one thing to another. So one every gig that I do, I learn from it. Um, and my upbringing has a lot to do with that. Um, from going from one gig to another, which my father has always done. you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so from doing Dolores, it was great fun. It really was great fun. And then... Uh, Going from that to a different gig, I just learn, and like you even said it, I learn so much from it to move on from the next. Uh, when I was in, like a band like Therapy was fantastic, but I knew after a while I just kind of, uh, you know, just kind of wanted to move on because yeah. I kind of got musically tired of it. Right. You know, me and me and the guys still get on, um, you know, really well, uh-huh. um, and uh, every gig that I've done there's ne- never any bad vibes with yeah. any of the people I don't believe in that you know there's no need for it you know no you're right uh, that's that because it, it well the, it'll help longevity for your career you know because you never know where you might end up like like some something happens to someone last minute cover you've done the gig can you go do it you know the, all these things are, 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 are kind of part of the life of, of, of a working musician you know and yeah I yeah. And burning bridges is just crazy. Yeah, you life's know. too short. Oh, of, of yeah. course it is, man. Of course it is. You know, I, I, I've been obviously watching quite a bit of your playing, and there's two things that I've noticed. I, I, one is that when you're, whenever you're playing with anybody, you really know how to boss the band, and 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 what I mean <laughs> by that is like, just take charge of it. There's a really great video playing Dreams in Chile where you're just like. <laughs> You own the whole stage, heads up, looking around. That's really powerful. Yeah. You know, is that something that, that came naturally to you? Just that, like, I'm in the hot seat. I know your dad was a drummer, so or is a drummer, so... Still. Yeah, yeah um, so maybe that's just been in your blood for so long, but it's, it's, it's something that not everybody knows how to do, you know? Uh, I think I just like that kind of, you know, like, well, like we do know a lot of drummers... And I don't mean this, you know, I'm not, I hope I'm not offending people, but it's like, you know, each their own, but a lot of people like, you know, heads down and mm. they're like looking at one individual, which I do. And I like looking here, I like looking there, but I like that kind of thing of being just, I'm with everybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like, I'm part of the song. I'm part of the vibe, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, she was, it, she was looking for you, like, yeah, on the stage, yeah. like, you know, looking for it, leadership. And uh, I love that. I love kind of. Um, I'm. I, I. I'm not. Well, it depends on the song. It depends on the type of music. But I do like um, things kind of flowing. You know. Mm. To, but like I said, it's it's the type of kind of music it is. A lot of the shows nowadays, things are very. You know, everybody's got ears on. Everybody's yeah. playing with a program <laughs> click. You know. <laughs> I, I, I'm personally a big fan of things just flowing. You know and things just jamming it out you know yeah. and like w- like you were mentioning with that um dolores show i like just come on we're all together we're all we're all, we're all rocking <laughs> out together we're all like a bit there was like dolores's shows were great there was obviously a lot of people at our shows and uh, it was just such camaraderie mm. and uh, that's my favorite type of uh gig to play generally yeah. like you know but then i do love at the same time there was a lot of that with Glenn and with Glenn and Marquetta after mm-hmm. um, in swell season as they called there was so much um, you know so much mellow like m- more laid back than laid back and I do <laughs> I do adore yeah. that as well because you're barely barely touching the drums at all and I have so much passion for that as well you know yeah there's, there's a video on your site with, with Glenn and, and you're playing in a sweaty club at somewhere and you're playing brushes yeah uh, and it's going from like nothing to that explosion thing like yeah really powerful it's a pretty amazing to watch it's like i think the first track's like eight minutes long or something crazy it's just, <laughs> it's just really and it's just like and you're singing as well so there's so much happening on the stage but yeah 
you're like, yeah, it's it's pretty marvelous to watch. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, do you know what song it was? It's on uh, your site. So it, it, it is on your know. site. Hang on, and I'll tell you. Um, but the other thing I noticed, there's a really great solo from uh the UK drum show that you did in 18, 2018. Okay. And um, you're just playing some beautiful jazz time. Right. And then you build like the shuffle thing up and and you but you start playing like really outside whilst you're keeping two and four going and it what it made me think about was you're just you're not you're like you're at home playing anything I think right you know stylistically because obviously the the jazz thing from from growing up and all that is that accurate is that am I am I fishing here uh, <laughs> no not at all I kind of um I love with that myself actually a lot of times i do get bored like you're in, we're we're in my place at the moment mm-hmm. um and obviously i i i'm here i i do a lot of sessions here which is a savior and then i come here a lot and i play on my own and um i get bored after a while playing on my own <laughs> um but then if i'm playing on my own like like you mentioned at that, that thing uh, i will just play like that and i'll just you know, mosey around and I'll play anything and I could be within the four of a bar or playing, you know, any time signature, but I love to keep that, you know, four going or I could be, you know, playing three, four, six, eight and there are bars of five or seven, but Mm -hmm. I'll keep the hi-hat steady, but then I'll be going somewhere else completely but then I'll always keep the high hat steady. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. But like, it's like you're so outside of like. You're not really thinking. You're thinking about like texture, and you're thinking about color, and you're thinking about. You know, there's not. It's not like. Here's a jazz solo where I will play chops and triplets. Do you know what I mean? It's not. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like there's no prescription. It's just you're just improvising. It's really lovely to see, man. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. I completely know what you mean because. Um, a lot of times my eyes are closed. I'm not really kind of a, I'm not a, like a technique kind of person, you know, kind of doing that. I'm just kind of, a, I don't know, I'm just floating, floating uh-huh. around, kind of feeling it more than kind of, a, a kind of, a, like I said, playing different techniques around the kit when soloing, you know. Yeah, it's great, man. That that's, Thank you. Is that, is, I want to say... Chapter one. It's the frames live at Whelan's, but it doesn't okay. actually list the name of the song. I don't think. Um, but it's great. It's like this brush thing that you build up from nowhere, and then it just explodes out. It's it's really amazing. All right. Thanks. I wonder what song that is. Oh, uh, it's headlong. Oh right, that's a beautiful frame song. It starts yeah. off very mellow and then just absolutely explodes yeah and then just goes mellow at the very end again yeah yeah i re i love that song i do love that song and uh yeah absolutely explodes yeah um, so they write some great songs I, I do love playing that yeah i feel like he's so underrated man i feel like he should he should be way bigger and like he, <laughs> he's won an oscar and all that like i mean he's yeah. you know he, he i knows. mean in the states these days um he is um He's doing he's doing colossal. He mm-hmm. absolutely is. He just did a tour with uh, Eddie Vedder as part of his band on this solo tour with um, Chad Smith playing drums and right. uh, Pino Palladino playing bass and stuff. There's there's no harm on Glenn. He'll he'll I mean, that's he'll, a he'll terrible just be band. Fine. That is a terrible <laughs> band. <laughs> yeah, there's no I'd... worries on Glenn. Oh, good. It's good. To, like. Cause... You know there are there are sort of massive stadium touring artists, and you're like, really? And yeah, then yeah. There's, a, there's a guy like that that writes like really wonderful songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, well, it's a joy playing with him. You know, joy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, are you attr- are you attracted to music like that? Like music that's a little left field, a little left to center. Uh, like I'm, I, I can't say I can't at all say I'm attracted to one sort of music mm-hmm. um which uh, uh, again i say it's because of my upbringing if i was to say i'm attracted to one sort of music i'd find that absolutely boring uh, <laughs> which um is the same as i was saying about being in a band mm-hmm. there was a fantastic thing that happened the other day do you remember those compact disc 
things. Do you yeah, remember man. them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're like tapes. And do you know what? <laughs> Contact compact discs are ac- actually making a comeback now. I heard really. Last week. Does that ma- yeah. mean my collection's worth something? It might be. <laughs> well, but thank God, I I actually kind of have um, held on to a lot of mine. It's in my parents' house, yeah. and my uh, eldest daughter, she's sixteen. Ava, and we went out and we had a look at it um, only last week and uh, I forgot how many like it's like it's a ridiculously big collection and she couldn't believe it yeah. and uh, I have to re- I might I, either I'll set it up here or I'll set it up at home and um, when I look through it it's it is a ridiculously eclectic you know um, collection there's mm-hmm. not in any way there's not one style it kind of narrows into it mm. does kind of cover all not all it it covers you know a lot of different genres it's yeah. not just rock and roll it's not just just jazz it's not just anything mm. you know and that's what i like to say my style is you know do you think that's something that's kind of unique to drummers I think it's something that is essential <laughs> to drummers, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because um, uh, I think if you want to survive these days, it's, you know, it's essential. And uh, I think to just play one style, I think is overly boring. Yeah, it's just, I just yeah. don't think you're going you're gonna to get a career out of that now. No, you're not, you know? You know, like there's only one U2 and it's because they came at a certain time, and they they and you know they they still evolve, but they still have a sound, and, and you know yeah, yeah. There's only one I I don't know that sort of the who you know you're never really going to get another band that can play like that for their entire career now. So like I love playing, listening to all of the above that you just said. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I was having this conversation the other day with uh, a group of mates. And we were just saying, what is the next chapter? You know, I don't think mm-hmm. it's, is it possible? What could it possibly be the next musical chapter? Where is it going to go from here? Personally, mm-hmm. I think today, as regard, this is just my own own opinion. Musically, I think it's, people might get offended when they hear this, but I think it's dire. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's, you know, I'm talking about modern music. I think it's there's nothing fresh. There's nothing, yeah. In any way, inspiring it, happening. Where where could it possibly go? It's hard, man. It's hard. There's a, for me, there's a few things like. The internet's wonderful because it's democratized music. So what it's done is it's made music accessible to people that might not have it, or it's it's made being creative to people that might not have been able to do it, might not have been able to afford it, which yeah, is wonderful. Yeah. But yes, it also it, it also sort of diminishes creativity as well. Yeah, yes. And I, I've seen, and I, I won't name them, but they're a really, really well-established now, newer, they're a huge pop band. And I went to see them. I got free tickets, and I lasted 40 minutes. Right, okay. And my wife and I left. It was like, this is awful. There's no music. Yeah. There's no music here. It's all, yeah. the, it's all the set and the production. Yeah, it's very, very true. And yeah. there's there's no song. Like, like it's one thing, like, you, you can start to, you can sort of slag 90s pop music all you like, but, like, see if you listen to a Spice Girl song. Yeah. There's, an, there's an actual there's a song. song. There's yeah. a song. There is yeah. a song. You know, so you can sing back, if you want to be my lover. Yeah. And, uh, and these days there's artists... But you can't sing back. No, that there's no, song, there's no, there's no melody. There's no like the with the, with the, with, the, with the, those nineties pop songs, all that boy band stuff as well. There's a intro, there's a verse, there's a discernible chorus, there's a bridge, there's maybe a key change. You know, there's there's actual musical f- function within it. Yeah. But yeah. if you take a lot of modern pop music and play it just on the acoustic guitar, there's no song. There is not. Um, and as I, I work in, I do a lot of weddings. Yeah. And some of the music you gotta play, like really, we've got to play this tonight. Like, there's no, there's no song here. Like, and you know, as I don't know about about you, but I grew up the way I learned growing up. I, I learned to read later. Yeah. So I learned to play by ear. But when when there's no cue to cue you into the chorus, 
or there's no rise in the tune. It's all done via production. There's no actual music. It's really hard yeah. to to learn. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't want to be an old man. I'm a grumpy old because I'm not. But I think you're right, man. I think it's it's really 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 bad. And even some of the bigger bands who like there's bands now. Well, who, you went oh, missing. Yeah, you're right. God, my foot got caught. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's bands like ten, fifteen years ago were amazing, and now you look at their, their their current output, and you're like, oh, is that where we're at? You know, it's just yeah, I hear you, I hear it's, you. It's grim. And then you even rewind back, I don't know, to the seventies, and there was just mu- music was glorious. The eighties, there was you know glorious, but then stay stay away from. It was funny. I was only watching this thing of um, last night on YouTube of going back to 100 years ago mm-hmm. of the chart toppers all the way through to today mm-hmm. the year the year the number ones of you know that year the best chart toppers for each uh-huh. year uh, chart toppers i don't think um are uh, relevant you know no. i don't i think shy away from the charts you know mm-hmm. I yeah. think that's for Johnny, Johnny whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, because there was a lot of, uh, you know, if we look at nineteen ninety one, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, that nineteen ninety one was in it, but I think it was something like, uh, uh, one of those, what do you call them, the, the Stock Aiken Waterman. That was one <laughs> of the things. There was no mention of Metallica and Pearl Jam and Nirvana oh, and yeah. stuff like that. But um, I think um, uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. Know what I'm, I, was, I was saying something. I, I forget, forget what. I, it I, is. I'm just looking. We're just looking for that thing to kick music in the ass again. And I, I think you're gonna. Yeah. F- I think you're gonna find it in the fringes. Like if if you go to some of the smaller the smaller scenes, man. If you were to go out to a gig on a Tuesday night to a bar where there's like, you know, a, a venue, dingy hole where there's next to nobody there, you might find something worthwhile, you know, but... Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's sort of, do you want to dig that out when you yeah. you, you have a, you're a, you know, you've got a career and you've got to focus on different things, you know, it's hard. I do like um, looking, that's again, I mentioned my daughter, I like um, looking at what she's into, mm-hmm. like she is, sometimes I'm Mr. anti uh social media dep- depending on which uh Platform. pages it might be you yeah. know yes exactly but uh she can be very influential to me mm-hmm. on on what artists mm-hmm. she's into you know at the moment just the only new albums that have come along that have been um that I've liked have you heard of um Madison Cunningham from the states yeah the uh, the guitarist in my band hipped me to her yeah, and she's she's just I think phenomenal. You know, obviously mm-hmm. all of her influences are you know old school, you know mm-hmm. American uh, bluesy, old school, you know d- dirty, you know blues guitarists, mm-hmm. and uh, mixed with beautiful songs. Mm-hmm. And then Robert Plant, Alison Krauss's new album, mm-hmm. and there's lots of others. And then being a drummer, a lot of the times I go for like. Um, just great drummers with a great, great feel that add mm-hmm. that certain something, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of times, m- my favorite influences are always kind of singing drummers. That's mm. uh, a big thing, which has a thing on me, you know. Really, Levin and uh, all that. Oh yeah, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a big thing which I've always loved are uh, um, artists that sing. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily drummers, but like artists who actually sing as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, always had a big thing to me. Yeah, uh, I'm right. I, I I dig Phoebe Bridgers' new record or her latest record. I think Phoebe Bridgers yes. is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, she's great. Yeah, she, 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 she There's something. There's something there. She, you know, she can write a song for sure. Um, yeah. I, I really like Lizzo. I think Lizzo is worth looking at. Lizzo. Yeah, L I Z Z O. She can play. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Um, like. Uh, Gospel girl from the states, yes. Um, and she, she's you should watch her. She did a tiny desk concert for NPR. Okay. She's sensational, man. She can okay. sing. She can sing really well. She plays the flute and all that. She's yeah. Yeah, she's talented, man. Okay, I'll check that out. I think it yeah. sounds familiar. 
Okay, definitely. Yeah, and she's got like her new a new tune has this great sort of um sister sledge disco vibe going on. Okay. Like proper seventies disco thing, but like modern. It's really you know what I mean? Like modern production and all that, but the the changes and all that feel like it's like this could be seventies disco, it's good. Okay. Cool, yeah, thank you. So no worries. But yeah, it's it's tough to find, man. It's tough to find. Especially if you're looking at the, at the top forty, and what is what's a funny thing for us as well is that we sell drums, and if you look at the top forty, man, you're not finding a drum kit anywhere. No, that's exactly it. You so know? when you do look at the drummer, you kind of go, "Oh, yeah. who's that?" Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think Sam Fender is is kind of bringing the guitar thing back a bit. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, has has the guy that plays for him, Drew Michaels, a nice player. So it's it's good to see that being a, that yeah. coming around, you know. And we all we always kind of pay attention to that, which is good. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. Um, sorry, I'm going to find my questions again because we got into it there. Um, so yeah, I was listening to you talk about. Oh, you were talking to Sarah Hagen. Yeah, Sarah's great. Yeah, so I was listening to you talk to Sarah about. Um, well, lockdown forced you into the studio game. Yeah. So how's that going? It's been going great. Studio, I had the studio for a couple of years before mm-hmm. the whole lockdown. Right. And uh, which was very fortunate because like we know, um, a lot of people then were on the hunt immediately for a studio and then it would have been more difficult uh, because you're competing against, you know, he, he this person and that person mm-hmm. um, all acquiring somewhere and not wanting to travel mm-hmm. um and i had this place and it's about a minute from my house so mm. not needing to travel ideal and uh, the landlord is just you know only a next door neighbor as well and um it's a saving grace mm. uh, i i really don't make noise here till you know, the late afternoon or so, because there's people in offices around me, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you know, I, um, I'm a dad, the kids are around, so uh, uh, I come up here, and some nights I've left it all hours of the night, <laughs> the early morning, you know, and it's, 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 it's like my second home. Brilliant. And uh, I've got a nice, if you can see that, I've got a lovely little kind of setup, and right. I've, got, I've got the... Um, Oh, what's it doing now? That's an interesting screen. Can you see that? I can see I can see a monitor, yeah, but I can't see what's on it. Well, because I'm recording with Logic, um, uh, at the moment I'm recording right. no, us speaking at the moment with Logic, uh-huh. but I've never seen it go to this interesting screen. <laughs> Brilliant. Very interesting. So, but, um, so, is it a new skill set you had to learn, or was there anything new you had to learn to get yourself going? Well, we had we had um, Pro Tools here before. Mm-hmm. Um and then because I was here with my cousin Michael and then um then he departed so I just bought Logic and then had to kind of teach myself but the great thing about the camaraderie of like you or me with the friends who were all mm. you know doing similar things with setups so um yeah it, you kind of learn it you know relatively quick. You know, mm-hmm. phoning anybody or everybody with <laughs> similar kind of issues. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then um, it's been like a lot of fun. Good. And if you do get into a spot of trouble at all hours of the night, you know that somebody else is up at that hour yeah. of the night. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I've you know spent my time kind of taking care of it, doing it up, and um, yeah, it's my getaway, and I'm, I love the place. Oh, good. Logic's got. I think Logic's really intuitive to use. Yes. Know. I love yeah. that the, the record button is like right there. Yeah, you know, it like is. You, you don't have to go find it. It's like, oh, that one's the the big red button is like right in front yeah, of me. It is, yeah. Um, and then I've had a lot of set. Look, I've sessions coming in, you know, mm-hmm. but I had I had a lot of sessions over the last two years because everybody's in the same way, and they're you know they're mostly all you know international sessions, not many Irish sessions actually. All kind of um, in the states, really, mm-hmm. you know. That's where I get a lot of my sessions coming from, and uh, which is great. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, so long may they continue. The, yeah, the, yeah. So do you nerd out on mics and and all that stuff? Is that? Yeah, I, I kind of yeah, I very much do. I nerd out a lot on kind of mics and and I always have. I've just even when I've been on the road, I kind of nerd out and that stuff. It's just kind of got, 
just out of hand you know, <laughs> over, the last, over the last while, you know. Uh, as well as drums, I kind of, you know, I get nerd out on, you know, uh, mics and on DIs and all of that kind of stuff, you know. It's, yeah, it's great. It's such a valuable skill set, though, to learn, man. And I think yeah. it's, been, it's been taught in schools now over here. I don't know what it's like over, in, over the road, but music right. tech is such a big thing now at school. Yeah, yeah, well, it's great. Uh, I, I, it really is. It's it's fantastic. So, and I think it's essential for mm. us guys, you know, doing it professionally. It just to know what you're dealing with, just rather than just going in and hitting stuff, to know all rounds of what you're actually professionally doing. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> no, I can't say necessarily. You know, it's great to just go in and do your gig and concentrate on that one only. But it's an added bonus to go in and know what you're doing. It adds to the to the tuning of your drum, to mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. the maybe the dampening of your of your your kit, you know, working mm-hmm. within the you know, the acoustics of your room, you know, rather yep. than just going in and thumping it, you know. Yeah, totally. And if you're hired into a room where there's a producer or an engineer, you you can have a conversation. Yeah, well, yeah. which I've I've learned uh, starting from a very young age. It's uh, something I've always done. So I suppose I I've I I just always learning. It's something that, mm. that I've always uh, felt passionate about, and I'm just still learning. And I don't think any of us will stop learning. And um, I've always been a pain in the ask asking questions. <laughs> and I know I was told that. Years ago, ah. even at home, I'm told that to stop. <laughs> why? 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 Questions. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, no, I think it's valuable, man, because we've all been in. I mean, I've certainly been in recording situations where I've been really green and like, uh, I don't really know what's going on, or, or engineers are embarrassingly tuning your drums for you because, you know, yeah. like you're too wet behind the ears and don't really yeah, know what yeah, to do. And yeah, then yeah. you swiftly learn, like, the next time, man, I'm going to know exactly. Yeah. How, how to do oh, it. Oh, like engineer. Yeah, I know. Engineer tune and you're, it's just like step away or even, oh man, I've, I've seen it all. That shit. Even live engineers, yeah. live engineers going up to junior. It's like step away from my fucking gear. You know, it's, <laughs> oh, I've had it all, you know. Yeah. Bitching because there's not a hole in the front head. Like there's not a hole well, in the rest I, of the man. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had that conversation too many times now. Yeah. It's like, engineers trying to go and uh, cut a hole in your bass drum and mm-hmm. uh, I haven't had it in years now but engineers trying to attempt to cut a hole yeah uh, in the front of your bass drum and you feel yeah, like yeah. kicking them in the ass uh, yeah. You know? yeah you know, you spent years cultivating a sound and tuning your drums to a point where they sound great like this don't yeah. fucking mess with it like just yeah, yeah. do your job and figure it out yeah, like, exactly. like the rest of us have to do yes you know? exactly yeah so, you know, we are a drum shop, and you met That's us. Great. You met us on uh, the booth of the Ludwig stand because we were down yeah. there at the show. So it would yeah. be rem- remiss if we don't talk about drums, man. Yeah. So you are a big Ludwig guy. I am indeed, which is sensational. Yeah, they make some beautiful drums. What are you playing? Are you playing Legacy? Or are you playing Classic Maple? This is uh, my Legacy here. It's a, Ma- a Legacy mahogany. Can you oh, see that there? I, I can see it. It's very here, pretty. Let's can I just do that? Can you see that there? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I was with another company beforehand, mm-hmm. and then at the same time I knew uh, the guy who was the the guy who was working at Ludwig Drums, and he got in touch and he said, hey, you know, if I'd like to... He, he used to come to the gigs in Chicago mm-hmm. um, when Home I was... Ludwig, yeah. And uh, yeah, when I was with, and I had a spot of butter with, when I was actually playing at the UK drum show and playing with my last company, um, when I was playing at the UK drum show. And uh, so I left the previous company I was at. Mm -hmm. um, And then uh, I didn't want to be with anybody Mm. for a while, you know, Mm because I've gone for, from, I was with two companies before that. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, just two fantastic companies but I think if anybody leaves drum companies it's just for professional reasons and that, that mm-hmm. was me you know two fantastic companies and I still use 
DW hardware. I just love their their mm. hardware. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know their flat stuff. And then the Ludwig thing uh, came to pass after a while because um, I wanted to finally go to a drum company because I was started off touring again. And um, now I am with them playing the legacy. I, I honestly, truly uh, mean it. I'm like, I see Ludwig and I'm with Zildjian now for about mm -hmm. over 30 years. I see wow. Ludwig and Zildjian as like the holy Mecca. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like the, I think Ludwig and, and Zildjian are like the untouchable. Mm. It, it's yeah. where it all began, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, we wouldn't be drum wise, I don't think. I don't know where we'd be. I don't know what we'd be without those two, you know. And to be yeah. playing them and to be endorsed by them is so fortunate, you know. I see myself in a great position, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, has it always been that kind of sound? Because you, you've got a huge sound and your drum sound is big. It's warm, it's open. It's Is that always something you've tried to cultivate and that's why you were drawn to them? Yeah. Well, um, I, I thought, like, my father had a, a classic years ago, and it was the first kit I ever started playing. Oh, okay. It was, a, it was a Silver Sparkle, similar to kind of Joe Morello's Take 5 kit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's the first thing I started hitting. Mm. And then from just growing up, you know, with so many heroes, well, John Bonham, you know, would be one of my idols, mm -hmm. and mainly, and everybody says Ringo, but of course Ringo, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so them being my two favorite bands, and I remember Le Levon then having, you know, that old kind of it wasn't a Rolling Bomber, but that old kind of, um, you know, wooden, you know, uh, yeah, the big twenty twenties, yeah, yeah, another one you mean, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of I always looked up to it, but that kind of like I don't have a hole in it. Mm -hmm. I, I'll keep them open. I'll only use like uh, some dampening when mm -hmm. when required. Mm -hmm. Um. I just love the the openness, the tone of them, and they're mahogany rather than being maple. Mm -hmm, and um, yeah, that's what I've always done. Kept them. I only have a little cushion inside the bass drum, and I'll put like a little ninety one kick in mm -hmm. or a mic inside. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's it. So it's the, those old. Uh, Influences for the, for the open sound. The, the, the sound is so iconic, like Bonham snare sound, and and yeah, it's, it's just you know right away what it is, you know, yeah. four four o two with an emperor, and it's that yeah. sound, you know, and it's, well, it's you can yeah. still get it, you know, easily. It's, yeah, especially with those the Vista lights that they've kind mm. of uh, done yeah. the anniversary. Yeah. I wouldn't quite go for that kind of big Bonham gigantic <laughs> sound now you know because it's it's like we've talked about um going from gig to gig you know and then mm -hmm. i love bringing the number of snare drums with me and dampening and whatever yeah. and then uh this this kick is a 22 by 14 right and then um it's 12 by 8 and then mm -hmm. this is a 16 by 14 but then i've got like a 14 by 14 them at the moment I'm using that as the extra, the extra <laughs> with all my bits and uh, on it. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's I've like, got a, my, like a table. Yeah, it's my, my table. But uh, I love the the sense of warm, the sense mm -hmm. of fresh. They're, they're yeah. beautiful. And then yeah. I've got um, my snares that I kind of am going back and forth between. Mainly are the the hand hammered. Uh, uh, copper phonic uh -huh. mm -hmm. which I absolutely adore I really yeah. adore it because you can tune it down so low and so right. dead but then you can really peg it up yeah, yeah. and you can get so much kind of whack out yeah. of it, you know? <laughs> and then the old school I bought it several years ago it's the Acrylite classic oh. yeah yeah. What's that? What, was, what size of Acrylite? Uh, Acrylite is only five yeah. so it's you know it's beautiful that's the drum I think that's the drum. It is. It um, is. Do you do you buy into the whole vintage drums thing? Uh, n yeah. Well, my other favorite kit is. I, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> my other favorite kit. I've got an old fifty-five <laughs> WFL. Oh wow! Okay. Which I've had for about uh, over twenty years. 
right. that I got years ago. It's um, my baby, and um, that's just there beside me. And then I've got an old uh, late 60s tricks on kit. Wow. Which, so there are like other kits that I use. And then I've got several other vintage snares. Mm-hmm. So, um, and uh, a friend of mine, I've got uh, another, uh, what do you call them? Ac- ac- no, not Acrolyte. Oh, it's it's in there. We recently restored that and he put a load of those Australian, what do you call the Australian? Oh, the, the Kentville heads on it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we did that. And I've got like another, um, uh, um, oh, Jesus. What, you've got me under pressure now. I, I can't. Oh. I can't. <laughs> Not at all, man. All good. No, 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 no. Stick with, with Ludwig and Leedy. I've got a uh-huh. Leedy 28 kick in there from Whoa. the 40s, which I absolutely adore, that I got like a few months ago. But I use that I, either on, I use it as a kick or else I use it for the, you know, the tunnel yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah. And I'll use the kind of uh, the mic at the front. And, uh, so are these, uh, are, these, are these old drums in rotation? Yeah, I, depending right. on the song, mm-hmm. I'll kind of I use them here and there. You know, I, mm-hmm. I I did use the WFL when I was in therapy for a while, but then <laughs> I said, "Oh man, what am I doing? This is yeah. madness. Yeah. I have to really mind it and take care." You know. Yeah, totally. And I, I did a lot more restoration on it. Yeah, because I, 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 I've had I've got a seventy acrylate, in it, but I've had a couple of older drums that have just not been great. You know, I had a couple yeah. of four four hundreds that. I had to move on. Like one of them, the wires wouldn't stay up. So you hit it too hard, the wires come off and the throw off still up. And you're just like, ah, I can't yeah. really, I can't. At that time, they hadn't brought out the new throw offs. Yeah. So we're like, I can't use this, man. I, like I'm three tunes in and I'm playing a timbale. It's just, it's, yeah. no, it's no use. And then I had another one that only wanted to be cranked up. That was the only yeah. thing it would it would do. And I'm like, this is supposed to be versatile and I can't really get a sound out of it. But yeah, then, right. I, then I got an accolade and it's like, man, this, will, this drum will do like anything. Yeah, right, okay. Um, there you go, that is it. I mean, I've got like lots of other snares here. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll kind of go here and there to, with them, you know, but then I find that I'll just kind of be happy kind of using what I'm happy at the moment and doing mm-hmm. lots of different sounds with them and mm-hmm. damping them, tuning them up and down. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, happy at the moment. And my my grand, me and my dad, we uh, re my gr- my grandfather Jim Hopkins was a drummer as well. Oh uh, wow! Okay. And he had a beautiful twenty inch Carlton bass drum that's oh. uh, in the other room there, and we uh, uh, it was covered in this kind of red, horrible kind of covering, <laughs> kind of sticky thing. Um, about four or five years ago, we took the took it apart and a uh, beautiful kind of silver, kind of sparkle finish on it. Amazing. And uh, it was a beautiful Carlton bass drum, so we used that as well. So it's right. a fantastic to have that. Really special right. to have that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A little bit of history. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. I th- I think there's guys that are right vintage drum guys, and then there's guys that are vintage symbol guys. You don't really get guys who yeah. do both you know it's it's a kind of yeah yeah interesting thing i think i i love them all really <laughs> you know i like i just love anything to do with drums uh, one of my i've got this beautiful book over there i won't get it out now it's one that was released about a year ago it's just about classic uh um, ludwig speaking pedals oh wow you know? okay have you got one uh, i do indeed yeah does and it squeak uh, <laughs> Does the book squeak? <laughs> no, the pedal. <laughs> uh, no, the, I've got the book. Just oh, all right, about the okay. history. Right, okay, but you don't actually have a pedal. I do indeed. Oh, yeah, do I've you? got okay. the pedal. Yeah, brilliant. And brilliant. Uh, yeah, I ju- yeah, it's great to be a nerd. And um, um, of course, uh, we all know uh, Mark Jeff's rusty drums. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Mark I haven't is, seen Mark uh, for ages. Yeah, he's he's great. So he's uh, ever the nerd yeah. for um for do you do you guys sell vintage drums? We, you know, we don't because there are guys like Mark and Joe Cox that do it way better than we would. Um, we don't have the customer for it either, really. Like yeah. right now, right now, I think we have a, a, a sort of late seventies acrylite, 
But we like what will typically happen is someone will trade something in and it will be in there and and we'll work out a price for it. But you've if you're going to do it, it's go big or go home. And I think you've got to devote so much time to to understanding it, learning it, learning the history to do it correctly. Yeah. Uh, th- there's so many people out there that know what they're talking about that if you don't yeah. do it right, you'll just get found out. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. And y- and you can't really do that to people. From yeah. a from a customer point of view, you can't fleece people on that. That's just not fair. Yeah. You know, so no, we we don't. Um, but there are, like you say, there's guys like Mark, there's guys like Joe Cox that do it tremendously well. You know, that really do know the history of the drums. They know when the serial numbers changed and how they changed. And they know when the badges changed and when they put the dampener on it and when they changed the screw on the dampener and when they yeah, went. Yeah. F- you know, and and I'm that's the, you. that that's the guys you want to do it, man. Yeah. You know, your 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 guy is it Tristan at Dramatic, who's like he yeah. he he's got all the old parts for yeah. like like old like all those old brands, old Slinger and Tom Tom Arms and things that if you're looking for that stuff, those guys will find it for you. You know, oh so, they will, yeah. It's yeah, great. so we we typically deal with just with much more contemporary and modern gear. You know. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, but does it like? There is a charm, and I think with the with the older stuff, you really got it. It's like, do you remember the old chat about guys like Elvin when they would go to the Zildjian factory and they would just go through a pile of ride symbols till they found one? Yeah, I think it can be a bit like that. Yeah, you know, like let's go this, let's go and see what snare drums are around and find one that stays in tune or doesn't. Yeah, you know the the yeah. hardware the hardware's in a decent enough condition for you still to use it. That is yeah. one one thing modern companies get right so well is the hardware they put on. Like the hardware on your Ludwig versus your Carlton will be night and day. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, and if if you're on the road, that's what you need. It sure is, you know, and that's why I do like like Ludwig are making fantastic, uh, you know, flush flat hardware mm-hmm. yet, and I've mm-hmm. yet to properly try it out and that's what that's the thing i started with uh, dw x amount of years ago when i was playing their drums and it's it's so far it's really you know it's so reliable Mm -hmm. it's fantastic because um i have it there goes nowhere it stays in the studio it's so just bounceable you know and Mm -hmm. hardware like i take out on the road as well Mm -hmm. like that you Mm -hmm. could do a hardcore rock gig with it right. and it won't move mm-hmm. and then you uh, use that or else you see drummers using the the big you know big uh, mm. double braced stands yeah excuse and me and i bet you if they did that gig with the flush like, they could get away with doing it you know yeah yeah i think they could it's so well designed now it's so well designed now Yamaha are doing, they're doing wonders with hardware right now with the Crosstown stuff that weighs like the whole set. Two cymbal stands, a snare stand and a hi-hat stand weighs seven kilos. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, that's bonkers light, you know. Oh yeah. Bonkers I, light. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've got, I've got uh, cases of it in, in a garage <laughs> just full of all of that hardcore stuff. Yeah. I should, I should sell it. I don't know if it, it would even sell nowadays. People just don't want that old. Well, you got hardware collectors, man. You <laughs> get ga- you get guys that want those eighties pedal boom stands that that like weigh as much as your house, you know, because <laughs> they'll they'll put them in a rehearsal room and 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 they'll they'll take all the punishment. Yeah, it's very very you very know, true. Actually, if you yeah. if you've got guys that are doing, if you've got like forty drummers coming through your rehearsal room a, a week, that yeah. are like just cranking it up and you've got to use the sticks to undo it'll take all that you know all yes. that all that gear will last forever you know that's very true yeah look into that thank you no worries here's here's something for you do you given that you record and you're into the kind of lighter weight hardware does it make the cymbals sound better uh no that's not something i've genuinely thought about overly you know as well right. as say securely just put this i've never used not in years, obviously. I have not. not I, have, I never use the, you know, the mm. at the Wing top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't. Right. Uh, I've never thought about that intensely of it, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think it was Peter Erskine seemed to suggest that it brings more low end out in the ride symbol. Beca- what, because- like if it's if it's heavier. No, if it's lighter, if if the if the stand right. is lighter because right. there's there's less there's less weight underneath there's it. There's le- less weight. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's very very true when you say it like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like 
the guys that put the the, the, the rack tom on a basket, but they, they float it. Yeah, that's very true, yeah. Because I haven't used any sort of, uh, you know, brace or any sort of... I've used this snare drum stand for my rack mm-hmm. in years. And just the legs on my floor tom, whereas mm-hmm. there's other ways you could brace it. The mm-hmm. floor tom, which I, you know, I wouldn't really do that. I'm not a fan of, you know, racking my rack tom. Yeah. But I know there's other ways of bracing it to the, to yeah, the snare drum stand, you know. Yeah, so, th- so that it's allowed to float a little and resonate yeah. because... Because if you put a basket on it, it'll, it'll put tension on the shell, which takes some of yeah. the resonance out, you know. Yeah, which you might, yeah. you might want, you know, something if you're recording, you might want less resonance at times. But The way I do do it, um, I, I always kind of leave it very loose. If mm. if you see what I mean here, I'll always... Can you see this uh, here? You need, you, you need to move the chair. The chair's on the road of the All drum. Right, okay. Can you see ah, the rack that, yeah, here? Yeah. Let's see if I can... It's always very loose here. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I, n- I never... Oh, it's caught just in the edge here. Yeah. It's always very loose. So if you're, listening, if you're listening to this and you're not watching this, uh, Graham's he's got his, his rack tom on a snare stand and he's moving it, but it's not clamped by the basket at all. So No, it's just totally the, loose, you know? Yeah, so the drum's really allowed to resonate, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very much. Yeah. What? <laughs> Oh, What's going on? Again. We're Whoa. totally, totally going all over the place. This is that's fun. all right. Yahoo! One too many beers. You still there? Yeah, we're still here. <clears throat> Hello. Now. Yeah, that was all fun. in the all all in the name of getting a good shot of the drums. <laughs> it's all about the drums. Yeah, absolutely, mate. So for you, for you, what's next, Graham? What's what's coming next? What you what you up to? Well, there's no big plans at the moment because I've um, just all my headphones came out. This is a disaster trying to show you my <laughs> rack, Tom. <laughs> uh, there's no big plans at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, I've, I've been asked to do this gig and that gig, and I've got like a few albums coming up. Uh, just in a different studios, which is which is good to just get out of here and do some recording. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I keep going here in this place, which is very exciting, actually, uh, because, uh, like I said, I've been just happy here, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because I've been happy here for the last couple of years, the idea of going out on the road again doesn't overly you know yeah yeah absolutely I and being with my kids being at home the last X amount of years before that that's pretty much all I did mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for my daughters growing up um, I've got two daughters they're now like 12 and 17 almost mm-hmm. and uh, I was more or less away from my, more of their mm. most of their upbringing bringing mm-hmm. rather than being home mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so to be now home and have this HQ and to do lots of recording as I do is kind of more appealing rather than hit, hitting the road again, mm, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah. really val- It's really valuable. And I think if COVID, COVID has taught us anything, it's yeah. just that those relationships are super valuable and, and need to be cultivated yeah. more, you know? My goodness, yes. And, like, I, I don't want to so- sound like an old man, but, like... um. I, I'm not certainly not retiring, but I just like the idea of not going on an overly long tour for six months or so. Like a, a little jaunts away for a short while mm-hmm. is it, beautiful, but mm-hmm. not getting on a bus and going away for a year. Yeah, you know? I mean, I've, I've, yeah, forget all that. You know that, yeah. that, that, that there comes to a point in your life where uh, you know your own bed and a shower and all that's like way more yeah. important than than. 30 minutes a night, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah, so that that's my plan of action at the moment. Uh, good. So, apart from that, all is good. All good, is so good. It's, it's good growth in your own studio, growth in your own your own thing. Man, that's really valuable. It's, I mm. think that 
I think good for you. Good for you if yeah. you don't want to, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's actually really refreshing to hear, and I think it'd be really refreshing for young people to hear. Just like, nah, I'm going to take hold of my career the way I want to, and, and you don't yeah. have to go and do this, and you don't have to do that. You can kind of find your own way through it. Yeah, uh, I think so. Uh, you know, it depends. Every, you know, every individual has their own choice, and things are hard. Things are more difficult for some individuals just as far as like we started off or didn't start off we talked about earlier about music these days and how it's kind of even different there's always for last however many years um being that chat about drummers being done out of gigs by drum machines and all of that jazz i remember do you remember that show rock school it used to be on bbc2 oh really vaguely yeah yeah right okay um I, it used to be one of my holy bibles that i used to watch <laughs> uh, when i was a kid and um jeff nichols was the drummer oh, wow. in the yeah, band yeah yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. and uh, i remember in one of the episodes they talked about uh, drum machines and drummers been done out <laughs> been done out of their jobs you know because yeah. of the start of drum machines and um it'll never be the way drummers no. will always be playing their instrument you know but um uh, i've i've sure had um great times and i always will have great times touring touring mm. the world tour here and there and ever and right. uh, I, i'll definitely be going back out and doing my jobs here and there and ever at the moment i just want to kind of uh have some good time at home you know yeah good good well mate i really appreciate you coming on and taking time out from being at home to come and talk to us about drums so thanks so much for that man oh thanks so much for uh chatting to me you know it's been no, no, fantastic no. you know yeah brilliant brilliant so um we'll be sure to when this goes out we'll send you a link to it and we can um like your socials and your website and all that stuff so where people can find out more about you um, and more about what's going on over over the road and over by. So, Come here, it was great talking to you. Thanks for having me along. You're welcome. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. See you later. See you, bro. Thanks for listening to this episode of Drummers Only Radio. You can find us online at www.drummersonly.co.uk. Drop us a line. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Drummers Only UK. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We're on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Any questions, info at drummersonly.co.uk is the email, or if you need leads, it's leads at drummersonly.co.uk. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Drummers Only.